Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. And uh, if you don't like this session, you can go home. And if I see only one person sitting, I'll go home too. <laughs> My name is Van, and uh, here's Sigran. My name is Sigran Georgian. Thanks for coming. So uh, today's talk is about HTTP Time Bandit. That's a, a tool that Sigran developed, and uh, we thought about having uh, another uh, go on a good old get flooding. So who we are, we are Van Tukaryan and Sigran Gevorkian work for Qualys. We break stuff, as all of you guys do probably, and uh, sometimes we fix stuff. We are into time travel, which we talk about in a, bit, in a little bit, and we both love to try, meaning we run fast, we swim fast, and bike fast, so if you start heckling us, we'll run away. <laughs> so, well, we're going to talk about, as I, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, application layer denial of service attack method, methodology, and a tool we will show you some stats, uh, we will then go into a little bit of defense and uh, some use cases and uh, usage possibilities for the tool. Why, why do we do this? What's the reason behind all of this circus? Is because we wanted to have a time machine, uh, we tried to buy it and we, find, we found one on eBay, it looks like this. And uh, then we figured it doesn't gonna work. And then we we invented our own. Uh, the time machine that we have does one thing. Uh, it kind of goes into the future and then calls back to us and says what's gonna happen to your web server. So that's what we have now. So before we show you the tool and talk about the tool or method. Uh, let's go a bit into the taxology, uh, sorry, taxonomy of the denial of service. So denial of services are, if they are not on the resource consumption side, they are striving to crush some stuff, degrade IT infrastructure capabilities. Uh, the second type, type that uh, goes towards uh, usurping the resources, usually does it on a network resource, uh, net network layer, tries to uh, get as much, as much connections as possible or something like that. Infrastructure-based denial services are trying to uh, flood infrastructure, network infrastructure, or d databases, or something else. And uh, uh, th there are target resource exhaustions, which are on a network layer, like SyncFlot, or application layers uh, that we are going to talk about, and then more advanced business logic layer. So classical application layer, layer, layer 7 DOS or DDoSes, are for us, divided into two, uh, two types, subtypes. One is uh, dosing, dosing blindly or semi-blindly. It's just uh, getting, basically uh, doing the get request over and over on the index.html or some other resource. Some more advanced guys do that from thousands or ten thousands of both simultaneously. Uh, the cons of this method are there is no feedback, and then uh, the, the load on a client and server is almost similar or near similar, so it's a near symmetrical load. There, are, there is a new breed of uh, those, DDoS tools. Uh, a type that is called slow star, slow lorry, slow HTTP test, slow read. Those guys are more of a uh, asymmetrical by nature. 
they try to exhaust uh, resources on the server side while client side doesn't really suffer a lot. And now, uh, like, for example, the slow HTTP test is basically doing HTTP, uh, HTTP post or get where it, mostly post, where it, where it is sending large data but trickling that data in and basically uh, just hogging the connection, the file descriptor or, uh, or socket descriptor on the server end. There are a few other types like PKI abuse where you uh, renegotiate over and over and over and uh, run uh, the server end into consuming more CPU resources than you. Uh, SQL wild cards are or could be used to cause the backend SQL server to think a lot and churn lots of CPU time and disk time and uh, disk usage. And uh, there are brand new HTML5 uh, lovely WebSocket connection hogging issues. Uh, basically, WebSockets by nature are are like uh, whatever slow lorries or slow HTTP test is trying to do, they are connected all the time. So each WebSocket connection hugs a, a file descriptor or um, uh, opens up a port and sits on it on the, client, on the server side. So if misused, WebSockets could be very dangerous for dosing or dedosing. I'm sorry. Yes. Near symmetrical, it's not the same, but it's near symmetrical, yes. And, uh, and as compared to the no, new smarter bot, this is very asymmetrical, where your clients are almost not doing anything, but the server is limited to some amount of resources and you're hogging it. Uh, some very exotic, uh, sorry, and uh, if you, since we have a very small uh, family-like situation here, you can stop us and ask questions anytime, or if you don't like anything, throw something at us, <laughs> we'll throw it back. Uh, so some exotic layer 7 DOS methods are, as we talked before, the DB uh, wildcard abuse, and uh, imagine that with a uh, genetic algorithm that figures out which payload or which uh, wildcard get more server uh, threads. Those could be very interesting and exotic types of threads. Uh, some new layer of above layer seven attacks, business logic attacks, Examples could be adding too many things on a, on a card for e-commerce website, and then that application logic of that site is gonna suffer or slow down or crash. A few other examples, uh, logging too much, I mean, not uh, causing logging system to log too much and run out of disk space or something like that. So what is our proposed method is not, not exotic. It's not one of those that we just mentioned. It's not one of the slow star, slow HTTP test or slow lorries or slow get attacks. Uh, and it's not trying to exhaust this uh, magical 20K HTTP connections limit. That's not the intention. Uh, so what we think is resource consumption is asymmetrical by the nature if the client is not full-blown, uh, it's not a full-blown client, basically. It's not running JavaScript, it's not trying to render everything, it's just requesting. Then server is gonna suffer more, everything else being equal. 
So what we propose is just a regular get plot for those who remember that coming from the first day of internet, uh, web probably. And what we do is just add some more analysis before you go on blindly uh, to a bunch of get requests. Right, so I'll, I'll take it from here. So the, the method, this time machine idea that we had, right? Uh, imagine if you're playing the roulette and you know beforehand which slots the ball is gonna land on. That's gonna give you an advantage. So this is the same kind of idea. You first, you analyze the website uh, and you identify the resources that are uh, what we call heavy. And uh, you start uh, flooding them with those, especially those resources and uh, hoping that that will bring down the website. So the idea is actually very simple. We spider over the, over the website, we gather all the resource download time, for example, and then that gets us a lot of data and then we use the uh, you know, mathematical approach to these statistics to handle a lot of data. So we take uh, the measurements, take the mean of the measurements, and uh, we, that's how we start uh, classifying resources there. So for example, uh, this is a scan of a website. You, know, you see typically some resources are fast, some are slower, but uh, uh, they are grouped in some categories. So, the group uh, on uh, your left is the slow resources, and uh, I mean they are significantly slower than the uh, majority of other resources. So it bears further investigation. So uh, as I described, uh, the formal method kind of is uh, we measure, we take a measurement over all resources of a website, then we calculate the mean. We selected the mean as the measure of center tendency. Then we calculate the standard deviation on those. Uh, so this is to eliminate the uh, resource measurement that is not uh, constant enough. You know that is uh, fluctuates based on some other like caching techniques or something. And uh, so then we just sort the resources by their means, and uh, we start looking at the top of the list. So I'll get back to this slide uh, in the demonstration. And so now give me a second uh, to run the video. Okay, full screen. He's a full-time Linux guy, so he hates it, Windows. Yeah. Somehow. He may crash it. It's not getting full screen, right? Yeah. Wait. Oh, okay, play it first. So here, in this example, I'm running the tool against a locally hosted website, and uh, I specified the depth of the crawl, number of measurements to take, and uh, it pr presents a list of URLs um, sorted by their time. So it can be instructed also to generate an XML as the output. We selected XML because it can be fed to some other tools, and I'm sure people can come up with some clever ways of using this data. So here we see the measurement and the measurement data, for example, the mean of the uh, download time and the standard deviation. So the ones that have higher standard deviation can be thrown away. And this tool also has ability to uh, measure by start to download time. So you can actually evaluate resources with both uh, criteria and that will give you a better idea of uh, what the heavy resources. Um, because uh, it, it may, may be diff different uh, why the resource is slow. So um, this is a visualization XSLT that allows, based on the XML that's generated by the tool, it draws this uh, chart. And so this chart helps us understand what the resources are. So there are four quadrants here, and the top two quadrants uh, have resources that are, that, have, uh, that are unreliably measured. So we throw them away. Instead, we concentrate on the uh, bottom left uh, quadrant, which are slow resources, and they are consistently slow. So this, in, it is in these uh, resources that we need to find the ones that we call heavy. We need to concentrate in, in the quadrant. And the closer to the origin the resource is, the better or worse um, in performance terms it, uh, its behavior is. Uh, so yeah, we can just uh, concentrate on uh, top 
10% of these resources and start uh, testing those. Uh, there is another um, visualization method that this tool uh, affords, and this is, you know, graph physics dot language. It generates the graph of the website in uh, dot language. So this is, uh, right now, it's not very, very useful, but again, in future, someone might find something useful to do with it, and it maybe highlight, uh, you know, heavy resources somehow. So uh, once once you have guesses about the resources, right? What, what can be done using this tool? And uh, the idea is that we can uh, test it against. For example, right now I'm running a test against uh, uh, content management uh, system uh, concrete, and I specified again the URL, the depth, how many measurements to take, and it will come back with the resources that uh, it thinks that should be tested, should be further tested. And then just by looking at this list you can start having ideas, for example, uh, why, why a resource is slow. Maybe it had to do a DB access, and that's why it's slower than, you know, just about box. Uh, uh, so you start getting an idea of what to do. So what can be done also with this tool, uh, the XML that uh, gets generated by the tool can be fed back into the tool to test, the, uh, test this guess that the resource is really heavy. So you give the, uh, as an in parameter, you give the XML, and then it will run the test again uh, with more number of probes. And it will return, re, re, say, you know, previously it was, uh, the measurement was 10, now it went back, back to 12, so, uh, oh, let me just pause this for a sec. So, uh, if, if the performance degraded, that means that, that means that the guess was right, that this was really a heavy resource. Otherwise, it, it, I mean, this, this delay in uh, resource presentation may be caused by uh, load balancer or something. So this, is, this tool allows us to kind of come up with best guesses. So let me explain what's happening here. So, this part is supposed to demonstrate the uh, asymmetric nature of this uh, attack or test, if you will. So there are three screens. I, I separated into three screens. Uh, the top screen is uh, running top command on a web server. It's an Apache web server on a eight core machine, I think. And then uh, the bottom right one is uh, top command running on my machine. So right now it has about 9% CPU. Uh, and this is this. This was done with the recording software, so the recording software took uh, nine percent CPU time. So, and then the bottom left, I'm gonna launch some uh, tests to to kind of uh, stress the server. So, uh, we see that yeah, the, the server right now has zero CPU load, and uh, I, I'm launching the uh, tools uh, three times and uh, the load on the server climbs up to 8, 80%, and then the load on my client goes only to 9%, which is, the, as uh, Argon was saying, the, you know, the asymmetric nature demonstrates the asymmetric nature of this test. Yeah, actually, the load on the server is uh, 99, including the system. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's overwhelming, and you, you achieve this by uh, carefully selecting the URLs to attack rather than, you know, uh, attacking everything. And I, I'm saying attack because uh, it can be also replaced by testing because, uh, you know, this is valuable for testing as well. So uh, this is an example of testing. So uh, the uh, CMS here that was chosen, again, is Concrete 5, and then the there were three instances of the tool launched. Each one does only 100 probes. And you can, we can see that the server performance degrades over time, and uh, which proves that, uh, you know, the resource choice was uh, done, was guessed actually correctly. Uh, I think, yeah. Well, yeah okay. So, um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so we looked at other tools so to see what other guys are doing. There are tools that do similar stuff, 
from the testing perspective, some tools do the uh, statistical analysis, like uh, the first tool in the list to do HTTP, uh, but none of those do really, uh, none of those does really do the same uh, package functionality as the tool that we presented. A uh, few interesting things about the tools listed here. Tsong is uh, Erlang-based, very powerful stress simulator, stress tester, can scale on the clusters of machines and can it's known to generate up to one million concurrent uh, requests, HTTP concurrent, uh, concurrent HTTP requests. The tool called Pilot is very close to what we have, has a statistical analysis of some kind, but uh, it does lack this uh, parallel testing and load measurement uh, during the attack like stage. And it doesn't have the crawler, but uh, using an, uh, any other crawler, one could create a flow using Pilot as the consumer of the crawled list and run statistics on it if they really hate our tool. So what do we do? How do we defend against this? We call Master Jedi, um, Master Yoda. And uh, it's really hard to defend against DDoS, but against DOS, some, some things could be done. If it's layer 7 DOS and it's not one of those uh, exotic ones, it's just a get plot, there are ways you can fight with it. Load, load balancers would be one of the good propositions. Uh, one could use our tool to figure out what's the problem in the first place, and if, if they could eliminate the resource hog. We will go through a couple of Apache configurations and uh, Apache modules that could be a good solution. And then we would suggest on a very good uh, Apache secu a mod security protection mechanism that we were too lazy to implement. But all of these, again, could fail if the attacker is very resourceful. If he knows he's, being, he's dealing with a system that is being protected with one of, one of the above mentioned methods, except solving the problem of resource hogging, they could play on a, right on a, a border of allowed stuff. We'll come back to it a bit later. So load balancers usually are uh, good for this because there are some rate limiters that they can use, unusual traffic filters and source checks. Possible issues would be if the backend IP address is discovered, then load balancer becomes non-operational. Uh, attackers can go, can go directly to the backend if backend has a public IP. Uh, load balancers can't really know what is the real load on a server on the system because they don't look at the resource consumption on, on a, on a back-end server. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned a minute ago, if uh, attacker senses that the protection is implemented, they could perform the attack right under the threshold without raising the suspicion of the protection services or, or basically kicking in the protecting method. And uh, so some methods of uh, defense are based on uh, looking at the similarities or detecting the way the packets or, or requests are formed. Attackers could mix it up and pull the protection system. Uh, one good suggestion is HA proxy. 
uh, not only will help with uh, setting up different policies that are setting thresholds, limit, uh, limiter, resource limiter policies, but also they would be, uh, HA proxy implementations would be helpful to divide up your resources into static and dynamic sorts and you need to really push that very low threshold only for dynamic stuff and let the static content uh, be more freely available or have other different uh, request rates. Besides uh, being a load balancer, HA proxy has the natural way of protecting your backend if you have more than one backend by, by just load, load balancing. So uh, what about commercial protection services? There are cloud-based uh, security as a service, software as a service, uh, solutions for this. Most of them do the same as load balancers we mentioned uh, or uh, protection modules that Apache could have, usually are resource rates connection originating IP limiters. Some of them also have nice features that they also will protect you from slow star type attacks, for HTTP test, for HTTP read. And uh, as additional bonus, they would throw in more security-like features to protect you against SQLI and XSS. Problem with those services, they are costly, Good service is going to be upwards of 150 bucks per month. We talked to a couple of users of those services, real users, and they complained by literally saying, I quote, would not use the full blown solution because don't want to degrade the user experience. Because uh, usually commercial protection services, those DDoS protection services usually slow down stuff on a first connection, will require CAPTCHA or something else. And there was a good talk this year in this year's Black Hat about uh, DDoS medication bypass. So basically to reiterate, it's basically playing, playing right under the threshold, mixing up stuff and basically fooling the curve protection services and all the, the paper says that almost all of them, the major ones, get pulled easily. So saying that, we suggest that uh, an owner of a large uh, web resource or web resource that has a asymmetrical load between its resources runs our tool or any other tool to figure out what are, basically use, use it as a QA tool, figure out what are the resource hogs and basically take them out. For that, they, they can also, since it's, uh, it allows you to tweak with the uh, XML, you can also uh, change parameters, make it more stressful for the server and uh, basically think as a hacker and use the tool to figure out what will happen. Uh, in an ideal world, if we weren't too, be, uh, too busy or too lazy, we would uh, generate some config files for Apache modules that could protect or for HA proxy. But uh, to be honest, we don't even know what to choose because it depends on your situation, so we can't really suggest a universal silver bullet. So we, uh, as Tigran showed you the concrete CMS that he basically overwhelmed with three threads running uh, top resources over and over. And we did try to do the same thing, but provide some protection and see what's happening. So the baseline was even something even worse. It was like one client running 10 parallel requests, 
three CPU, uh, three percent CPU utilization on the client machine. Server is 98%. This is very high end server struggling. So uh, using standard Apache configuration directives, nothing could be done. If you guys can figure out something, that would be grateful. Uh, that would be great. We will be grateful because that makes our things a lot easier. We can just provide the Apache config suggestion and people are cured of all the dots. Um, then we tried going through some modules that will be helpful. Mod security comes into mind right away when you want to protect your Apaches. Now, some directives help here. They are a bit crude. You can set it up and like uh, limit limiters per IP and you get the uh, bad guy throttled right away and CPU just goes down to zero. But this is too crude. Wouldn't recommend it. So the advanced mode security protection is the part that we said we are lazy and we didn't implement, but this would be the best solution probably because it's gonna be uh, tied to the real web server on a server side, it's gonna, it's gonna feel the pain of getting hammered. It's gonna know which resources are most uh, heavy for him and it's gonna set different thresholds for different resources. So it's not gonna cut everything with one cookie cutter. Still in a theory. Coming next year, maybe. So another module, very crude, very fast, it works. It's by setting the maximum connections per IP. Uh, as they say on their website, this module is not designed to prevent denial of service attacks. Um, they are right, because this is very cool. You can't just limit by IP. Uh, mod QS, uh, it's, uh, a bit more controllable, has more features, basically does the same as the previous mem uh, module, but can also protect against low star attacks. Uh, this guy is the trickiest of all of them, uh, very hard to configure, but it's, it's very rich. So you could, you could really uh, generate specific uh, settings for your application by running it in a test mode and uh, generate, uh, and you can figure out what the thresholds that you need to set. It's pretty, but it's also very interesting, you can set up uh, these uh, settings that are based on this idea of depth and credit, so you can let it, let it accumulate uh, some incoming traffic all, all the way up to some depth threshold, and uh, it's going to be more elastic, where it will let you have this spontaneous traffic coming in, but if it sustains, it's gonna kill it. So it's uh, less straightforward, but more useful, more, more useful for real web apps. This module was promised to be the one that really looks at the resource consumption, that really looks at what is going on with the server, but it's discontinued. We couldn't make it work with uh, modern Apache servers, and that's why this green and angry guy over there, because that, that day we were also green and angry, couldn't get it work. This one motivates it is the Superman. It works well, really easy to set up. Three directives, you set it up, it works. If you're gonna go with limiter, 
this is the one. Easy to build, easy to install, easy to set up. So if we would go in, uh, into this road of setting up one of these modules and hoping it works, then we need to make sure they don't interfere with protection against this popular slow star attack. Uh, the, our favorite module, mod evasive, is not protecting against uh, slow star attacks, but it also is not conflicting with it. So you could then uh, come up with a slow star attack mitigation by using Apache, regular Apache directives listed below. And then there is this very interesting module. Uh, it's a bit wild, hence the Ranger. Uh, what it does, it's not for DOS attack mitigation, but it's, it can be used for it in a very interesting way. It uh, can get Honeypot, uh, uh, Project Honeypot data and get the list of offenders. And then one could use the list of offenders using another module and block those IPs. Uh, let's talk about the usage, recommended usage. So we recommended that we use this tool as a QA tool, find out the resource hogs on your web app and take care of them. Of course, it could be used for bad. The last portion of the Cisans demonstration was almost the the essence of the bad usage, where you press tested it with parallel analyzer attacker mode. And of course, it could be used as the bad times many, and uh, we know what happens then. So let's go back to what we have and what's going to happen. We want to understand, uh, get a better understanding of what tool would get when it's used against the targets that are behind load balancer. So far we use it with HA proxy. We have some ideas, but it's not full analysis. Uh, SQL wildcard usage, one of the, uh, one of these uh, exotic attacks could be embedded into uh, stress testing when, when, if we find forms that take uh, some arguments that could go into SQL, we could try to leverage that and get more stress with uh, SQL wildcard. Uh, state reset cost could be looked at to see if it's going to be pricey to force the server to generate uh, session IDs over and over. And the automated attacker and service degradation measurement uh, that Tizan showed that uh, could also be enhanced and you know, could be more stressful for such. So that's, that's all we have. And uh, we have uh, released the tool. It's on a GitHub. You can download it, play with it. This presentation, which is going to be on a website, I think, has all the references to all the tools or uh, papers mentioned. And uh, we'll take some questions. So uh, you're saying that uh, it could fire back the request and then do something on the CPU. Let's say you said insert something into 
uh, SQL DB and uh, response comes back, I'm done. It was real fast, but there, that insertion or deletion takes CPU and So that's why this uh, parallel analyzer, attack analyzer mode is making sure when you stress it more, it becomes slower, which means it's not delay that is arbitrary, delay state, sleep or something else. It's really slowing down because the server is overwhelmed. But of course, th those resources that are going to be CPU hogs or DB hogs, but Answer right away, we won't detect it. Yeah, we don't really care if it's static or not. Well, I mean, we don't assume it's static or dynamic. We look at the log. Right, right. That, that's kind of uh, this, uh, let me show you this one. So uh, that's why when you take overall uh, baseline uh, of the entire website, right, you know that some behave uh, in some way. Here I tagged some of them as normal. And you know, majority of them are maybe static pages, maybe some resources, uh, you know, CSS and whatnot. And then some are markedly slower. So then it, it bears, you know, further investigation. Why is this happening? So this is what this tool is trying to do to kind of throw away the majority and allows you to concentrate on the 10% or whatever it is that is interesting. Tool cannot do authentication. And, uh, I think right now it can't even replay a cookie or do a HTML, I mean, a HTTP uh, header injection of some kind, but that would be one way to embed. Uh, I, uh, so it's not, uh, we're not supposed to advertise anything, but Qualys has similar tool embedded in their scanner that does the authentication and then that does the attack. So. This is a community tool. There is a but I mean, th there is a, uh, underneath curl is used, so we could add uh, authentication. Uh, so that that's good feedback. Thank you. We still have time. Can take questions. Any question about anything? <laughs> All right, then we we won't. Take any more of your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot.